Hi, and welcome back to your autism game plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and also an autism mom. Today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about yeast or candida overgrowth in our children. Yeast or candida can be a big problem in our kids with autism. For whatever reason, a lot of them seem to have this problem and it can contribute to a lot of the behaviors that are bothersome to us and to them. So I'd like to tell you a little bit today about how to recognize yeast, and then I'm actually gonna do a series on yeast here. So this will be the first video on signs and symptoms and how do you tell, and then I'll be doing a video on testing, what kind of testing is available out there. And then finally, I'll be doing a video on treatment. How can you treat yeast? If we want to understand why yeast and overgrowth of yeast or candida is important to our children, we first need to understand a little bit about the digestive system and how a healthy digestive system works. You'll see the relationship. Let me show you. We all have hundreds and hundreds of different types of bacteria, funguses in our intestines, mostly in our large intestines or bowel or what people refer to as the gut and some a lesser amount in our small intestines. And it should be that way. That's normal. Now, the important thing is that these bacteria and funguses, fungi are balanced in comparison to one another, kind of like a really good ecosystem. Now, we also have to remember that the digestive system is not only responsible for digestion or breaking down food and absorbing those nutrients, it's responsible for a host of other functions as well. I want to mention a few functions that the gut has that we may not know about. So the first thing is neurotransmitter production. Uh, neurotransmitters are things like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and those affect things like our mood, our cognition, ability to think, our brain function, our sleep, behaviors. So think about that in terms of how our kids are affected by a, an imbalance in the gut bacteria. Um, another thing it's responsible for is immune function, uh, regulating inflammation, it's also responsible for the actual health of the tissue in the intestine, the gut lining, and that's important because that affects things like infection in the gut, inflammation in the gut, and also inflammation around the body. If the gut lining is not intact or not the way it's supposed to be, then food particles and bacteria that shouldn't cross into the blood are allowed to cross into the blood, and that can cause problems like food sensitivities. It's also responsible for producing certain vitamins like vitamin K2 and other B vitamins. So if our, if our gut bacteria is imbalanced, then we may have a deficiency in those vitamins. The gut microbiome or digestive system is also responsible for appetite control, blood sugar control, and preventing other diseases like type 2 diabetes. So as you can see, the gut microbiome, the digestive system is responsible for so much more than just breaking down our food. Now, we all have small amounts of yeast in our gut and that's fine, that's fine for that to be there. The problem becomes when there is an imbalance. Like for instance, when we take antibiotics or steroids or even birth control pills, those things can disrupt the balance when there's this disruption in the balance, yeast and other certain bacteria have the opportunity to overgrow, which is why they're called opportunists. They take that opportunity when the good bacteria and yeast are low or they have been damaged somehow, they take that opportunity then to grow themselves, this bad bacteria, this yeast. And that is what can cause an imbalance. Now, how do we correct that imbalance? Well, I'm gonna talk more about that in the third video in this series covering more treatments. When yeast overgrows, it causes this imbalance in the gut microbiome, which as we know then can lead to a variety of different symptoms because remember that list of things that the gut is responsible for, that the digestive system is responsible for. Well, an overgrowth of yeast can cause dysfunction or malfunction of any of those things in that list. So then you can imagine what the symptoms might be from that. And this overgrowth of yeast could be at the root of what's causing some of your child's symptoms. And so if we look at treating the root cause, which in some cases might be yeast, we can actually 
treat a whole variety of different symptoms. Because if yeast was the root cause and we treat that, then we can get rid of all the symptoms or many of the symptoms that the yeast overgrowth was causing. So this is where it's really important to go after the root cause instead of just treating the symptoms. So what are the signs? What are the symptoms of yeast? Well, let's talk about signs first. Signs are things that you'll be able to see. So a big one is a white coating on the tongue. And this can be actually on the tongue or on the roof of the mouth or even on the insides of the cheeks. It's not able to be scraped away. The second thing is if your child has had very frequent recurring diaper rashes. The third is if your child has had issues with jock itch or vaginal yeast infections or um, infections of the nails, like the fungal infections of the nails, fingernails or toenails. If your child has any of those signs, it's quite likely that they may have an issue with yeast overgrowth. Then there are some other symptoms that may come along with yeast overgrowth. Now, if your child has a few of these symptoms and one of the signs that I mentioned, again, quite likely that they have yeast overgrowth. However, some of these symptoms can also be associated with things that are not yeast. And so we want to be careful not to assume that everything is yeast. Some of the nonspecific symptoms of yeast are nasal congestion, wheezing, coughing, cold hands or feet, or feeling chilly a lot, uh, body odor that's not relieved by washing, showering, mucus seen in the stools, or frequent laryngitis or loss of voice, indicating kind of an irritation of the throat of the vocal cords, which may be caused by that yeast overgrowth. To help you out in determining if your child might have a, an issue with yeast overgrowth, I'm actually going to post a screening questionnaire from the IFM or Institute for Functional Medicine. And I'll post that for you so you can go through those, answer the questions and see if your child might have yeast overgrowth. I'm so glad that you were able to join me again today. Thank you. I hope you found the information helpful and empowering, giving you good confidence that you can create your child's autism game plan successfully. So this video was on yeast signs and symptoms. I'm going to create two more videos for you about testing for yeast and treating yeast. So I'll, I hope that you will look out for those and join me for those as well. As always, I'd be happy to hear from you. Please email me at joya at yourautismgameplan.com if you have ideas for future videos. And remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.